Thank you very much. Um, right, firstly, I should just say what an enormous pleasure it is to come here, uh, not just to Scotland, but probably one of the poshest bits of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, uh, it, it's also a very real pleasure to be doing so much international travel and across two international borders to get here. Um, <laughs> I might have with no difficulties in either case. So <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, so firstly, and probably most interestingly, I'm going to talk about me. Uh, <laughs> uh, sort of mentions. Uh, we've actually just about kind of been now and have a, a small dairy farm, which is kind of against trend, um, but then that's me mostly. Um, and this is actually a, only a partial truth. I'm the co-owner with Lloyd's Bank. Um, very, very typical. Uh, Cornish farm, apart from the 26 acres of woodland. Um, that's probably about three times the, the, uh, the county average. Okay, for quite a long time now, I've been really interested in this idea of managing our land to maximise the, or, or, or to, to um, optimise the ecosystem services that land provides. Um, I think in this stage of the human story, no longer enough to see farmland as, as a place that you just hammer to get the highest yield of whatever it is uh, you particularly want to produce out of it. It's, um, uh, I'm coming to the view really that, that food production is uh, almost just a byproduct of good environmental land management. Uh, are there any farmers in the audience? So it's, it's now a, a dairy uh, just running off um, grass, which is not unique, but there's not many of us around yet, uh, but it seems to be working. And we've just started planting uh, trees in, in, in a field, and I think uh, if that works, we're going to expand that a little more the farm as time goes by. Uh, but in the knowledge that as we do that, it will change the dynamic things like that nesting birds. And if we do do this, which I, I think it's quite a reasonable thing to do, it may be that we lose skylight. So it's something we've got to really think about it, uh, uh, in each field as we go along. Okay, so you will notice that, so we just, just flash through these things, but they're all things that were very um, uh, important for me to take on board when we first went down this road. <coughs> The last point there about creating opportunities, I almost wish when I was speaking to some audiences that I could redact people out of everything. I'd just say um, the agent for ecological restoration, because that's what this creature is. And we managed to kill it off. Um, that's just one of our critters that are unusually eating a bit of order. Right, now. Challenges. It, it, um, as, as we've gone along with this, we, we've been from a very, very early stage looking to see how we can spread it out. And um, just in my little catchment, I've got ten neighbours to speak to, and I need to be getting across to them that we fully recognise all the challenges that they can provide, and um, and then look for solutions to them. So, uh, all their fell trees. They cause local flooding. This is, this to me is their, their uh, number one um, attribute as well as challenge the local flooding. Because by creating floodings, uh, flooding in a place of low agricultural value, we can then prevent flooding in someone's kitchen. Crop raiding, well, we're all grass, so we're not worried about that particularly. And I'm very lucky in that our, our holding catchment is also all grass, so it's not really a problem for us. Uh, we're not in a floodplain. Uh, this, to me, is probably the most serious challenge of all. Um, and I, I'm not going to say too much about that because I'm, I'm lucky enough not to live uh, in the heart of Strathmore and have to uh, to deal with that. But I'm sure other people will talk later. But all these things can be managed. Simply, Mark has been talking about the uh, and. Um, Water 
spreading into fields and so on that don't want it. Opportunities there. Okay, little town in Vinza we visited with um, uh, Gerhard Schwab and uh, Derek a couple of years ago. They were able to reduce the level of flood protection they were building around their town by two thirds just because a pair of beavers moved in upstream of them and started building dams. Now that's real money from real taxpayer, uh, taxpayers for real people. They are excellent catchers of agricultural pollutants. Biodiversity increases just across the board. Fishing, I know there are certain, are any fish in here? Right, well, uh, uh, um, I do get a little bit of grief from some of my friends who are game fishermen, but I have others who come and say, yeah, this is what we need across the board in Cornwall, this will really, really up the ante for game fishing. And what we've noticed is that the fish that we have, a uh, little brown trout which started life at this kind of size, are now about this kind of size in the beaver ponds. So that's really encouraging. Ecotourism. Lots of it. And I believe this is what the environmental land management scheme is designed for, an animal like this to bring back. Um, we're looking to try and uh, run a trial with a 20 meter margin uh, either side of streams where we stop cultivating, stop chemistry, maybe allow some grazing, but just to let the stream be itself. And this is a really important one, I think, for farmers. It is a, a good news story. You know, against the backdrop of uh, the collapse in wildlife across, across the country, never mind just farmland, but across the country, uh, against the backdrop of uh, badger culling, we need the new stories. We really do. And this is a uh, high potential for that. My, my motivation for getting into this was flooding and rabbit. In, um, 2012, it flooded twice, which is uh, uh, once would not been that unusual. It floods generally once every 10 years or so. Uh, and it's always the same 17 houses that get flooded. But um, in 2012, it flooded twice in the space of a month. And it damn near flooded again twice within a month in 2013. But a tree luckily fell into the road just outside the village, and uh, water was diverted out. So I was thinking we need to get a way to hold a lot more water on our land. Um, and having been reading a little bit about what was happening uh, on the River Tay and, uh, and also on the River Otter, I thought these animals are actually quite unobtrusive a lot of the time. Why not have a go with that? Um, natural flood management is, was already coming into vogue. Um, but uh, I also know that it's quite expensive. And beams have got to do everything in that line better and cheaper. Okay, so it's just another ecosystem services that our, our, our service our environment can provide. And with getting involved with the this is a project, we'll be able to build the evidence that we need to uh, give the government to let some of these things out here. Okay, so that's an aerial photograph of the catchment above Laddick. Laddick is there in the... Uh, Laddick is just about the bottom centre of the picture. Our bit of the catchment is the bit in yellow on the... Uh, sorry, in green on the lower right-hand side. And the red bit is the bit of the catchment that flows through our site. Oh, that does seem to good. Okay, so, so, so here's, here's our farm steading, if you like. And uh, this bit of catchment here goes into the beaver site, which is just there. We couldn't do it by ourselves, so we gathered the people around us who we thought would be interested. Vision's a grand word, isn't it? Um, Cornwall and I trust were very, very interested in, in being involved because they've just lost the site uh, where the landowners got cold feet. Uh, and they've been brilliant, providing lots of PR, all sorts of back office support, a bank account. All good stuff. Um, Exeter Uni, they were keen to come in with us, having already been involved in the 
uh, Devon enclosure trial, they were keen because our stream was the next scale up. I think uh, the Devon trial site has a catchment of about 10 or 15 hectares, ours is 130 hectares, and it is, it's definitely a, a, a scale up. <coughs> They made this uh, coast project to go to make a little film. Southampton, a fish baseline, which we thought was important to get. And then um, Derek Gow found some beavers. I won't go into that story, uh, Derek, about the sex of the two beavers you weren't going to provide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got a three year old male from Devon and from Wales, unexpectedly. And, uh, uh, we let them go on the 16th of June, 2017. So, a couple of days later, uh, I was down looking at the outfall and the pond where they were put in, and there was that. So, over the next week, this is what happened. So there you are, there, there's a uh, uh, flood risk reduction right there in the space of a week. In the space of um, 10 weeks, they are built uh, four reasonably substantial dams in the uh, 200 odd metres of stream that we've got to play with. Now we've got seven dams constructed, two lodges, massive increase in the original pond, four more ponds. So this uh, here, yeah, very much like the uh, hydrographs on the Devon site, uh, the red is the outflow, the blue is the inflow. At that stage, before the beavers arrived, the red was always higher than the blue, always. And in terms of timing, just about simultaneous with, with, uh, with the inflow as well. So in other words, if we consider this, as a, uh, this site as a water battery, the water battery here is broken because it charges up really fast, but this charges just as fast. So the battery is no longer at all. Ten weeks in, that happened. We had the first of significant rain. Still a nice big high peak coming in, but 25% or so knocked off the peak leaving and the, uh, the, the, the water much, much attenuated. So in other words, the battery was starting to regain function. This was at the back end of 17. Same kind of picture. This was one last year. And now we're down to pretty much uh, at least 30% knocked off any flood peak and sometimes as much as 50% that can go along. And that is uh, essentially of no cost to ta taxpayer and really regular. We've not had any dams fail uh, the whole thing just seems to work. What I tell people is, here we have 5% of the catchment above Laddock being operated on 200 metres of water by one pair of beavers. Now imagine if we had 20 pairs of beavers working on 100% of the catchment. I think the, uh, the chance of flooding in Laddock would be very, very much reduced. So the future prospects this is all going to continue as it is, and that is happening. We've had uh, a vastly uh, increased abundance and size of fish, lots and lots of amphibians, reptiles that have been grass snakes, I've seen a grass snake there for 40 odd years, and they're back. Birds we've never seen before. This is uh, continuing. That's something we want to get onto next as soon as. Southwest water cop up some money. And we want to start looking at uh, uh, similar uh, work but with uh, unnatural natural flood management on, on other bits of the capital, which should be coming in the next 12 months or so. I think nearly everyone in this room would, would, would uh, be thinking the same thing for Scotland. We just want this animal to be out there to reverse the damage and set the essential of abuse. <laughs> we want to see them adopted legally. I'm not so sure about the uh, um, European protected status thing. For me as a farmer, provided 
that whoever gets the role of manager is quick on their feet and can get um, can get uh, uh, the uh, licensing in place to remove or, or, or should be used. But that, that would be quite enough for me. And we have a, a lot of little villages in that in, in sorry in in the pool which are subject to uh, to flood risk, and I think this will help to enormously reduce that. But we've got to have. And although we get sort of hopeful hints and, and, and uh, little nudges and winks and so on, we actually need action to change to change, change law and change regulation. We need this too, and I don't think it need to be expensive. You know, our, our village, um, when it floods, according to the EA, costs the, the uh, householders around about half a million quid. So it happens every 10 years, 50,000 quid a year, uh, um, just for our parish, it, it's. I, I don't think we spend anything like that on um, on beaver watering or whatever you want to call it. Um, so it needn't be expensive at all. Okay, so there's a, a, a picture of two beavers who have never met each other before, Derek, uh, but getting on very, very well together <laughs> on, their first, uh, on their first day. Uh, it's a very lovely bit of cake. <laughs> so, uh, I think um, I, I'll just finish up by saying this was an uh, earth farmer's perspective. I would really underline that this is definitely this farmer's perspective. I'm sure there are plenty out there who have a very, very different view on things. But um, th these are uh, debates that we really need to have now. And uh, it means someone more diplomatic than I, and certainly more diplomatic than Derek, to, to start <laughs> 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 Thank you so much.